The Trees for Bees project arose out of the need to establish reliable food and forage sources for bees. Landcare Research began work on the program in 2009, supported by an MPI Sustainable Farming Fund grant and a number of co-funders. In April this year, we met with Dr Linda Newstrom lloyd at Eastwood Hill Arboretum in Gisborne, where she updated us on what the ongoing research has found. The bees right now are very threatened. There's four major threats. One of those is that there's not enough good, diverse food for the bees. Bee forage was something that, in my work as a pollination biologist, that's something we can do something about. What we want is to be able to give farmers a one one-stop shop where you can come to our information on our website or consulting with us or, or uh, other forms of information publications and you will find a list of plants that are good bee forage. They have high protein in their pollen. We've te we're testing the protein and they're practical for farms and different farms are going to need different types of plants. Traditionally, beekeepers have always used gorse, broom, willow, thistle, many other plants that are now considered, when we've seen the damage they've done to the native environment, they are noxious weeds. They damage even agricultural land. So the problem we have is that when people remove these weeds, they don't understand that the beekeepers are depending upon those traditional sources. I have seen entire fields of gorse go, I've seen willows removed, and that impacts the beekeeper's livelihood and the survival of the bees and the follow-on effects to the crop pollination and the yield and the profit the farmers are gonna make. We can't keep taking out plants without replacing them. And so what we're trying to do is replace those plants that we're taking out. We have to take out the weeds, but let's replace them. So this, this tree, we were surprised that we got a lot of pollen off this tree and it was good protein, not really high, but good protein. And so the oaks, they have so much, so much pollen on it, you consider the size of it. Right. So would that be good for farms? Well, these are 80 year old trees we're looking at and the form is such that there's grass growing right up to the base. If they were in a farm situation, stock would graze right up to them. So they'd be, they'd be ideally situated in, in a farm what we're doing in Eastwood Hill is really interesting. We came here because Barry Foster, who was president of the National Beekeepers Association, he told us that there was a lot of diversity here. It is very easy for us to do the research. Barry Foster put bees in the park, and with the bees here, then we could now catch our bees, check that they're getting, the, you know, that they go to the plant, they're attracted to the plant, they're collecting pollen from the plant, and we got a lot of data. There's two big things we've done that are really important. One is, in my opinion, we've solved that October pollen dearth after the, after the willows and before the clover. Beekeepers often say in that little gap, there's just nothing flowering in the farm, and that's true. Here, we didn't have a problem with pollen dearth. Here we had maples, oaks, ash, a tremendous number of species. That's when Eastwood Hill really comes into blossom. So we got all those species. And that means those are the plants we can plant on the farms. And October pollen dearth is solved. So we're looking for the autumn flowering, which is very important to prepare the bees for the winter. They need to store pollen and they need to be strong bees with high protein to be able to get through the, they have to live for two, three months in the winter. And then we will move on to Palmerston North. We're going to study the willows in the Willow Poplar Trust in Palmerston North for six months. And then we're going to move to Hawks Bay and we're going to try to help out the problems of getting enough bees for the orchards. And, and that's a different kind of uh, problem, a different challenge. The demonstration farms are being done because it's no good just doing an academic exercise on all the plants that bees will go to. We have to know that it works on the farms. I've been planting little areas of trees, you know, for, well, for years really, but mainly timber type trees and that sort of thing and, and amenity plantings. So, um, yeah, when I saw that, I, well, Paul actually, our beekeeper was 
sort of keeps bees over on this site and also on another site we've got which has got quite a lot of gorse sort of nearby and, and a citrus block nearby where the bees get quite a lot of um, feed from and, and the bees do really well over there but they weren't doing so well on this site so it's sort of a natural thing to go from planting timber and amenity trees to um, trees that will fill a need for the bees you know so that they can get feed, feed from them. Without bees we're not going to be able to pollinate clover and uh, without clover, you know, the whole system, that's, how, that's, that's the driver of the whole system really as far as uh, nitrogen fixing and, and as, as, you know, as, as a good rocket fuel for, for, for lambs and that sort of thing. So, yeah, just one thing leads to another really. The alders, we can get them in May flowering, also early, early, early spring. So they're a good candidate for that, those pollen dearth times. I think it's very exciting yeah. that we've got, for the first time ever, a scientist of some repute based at Eastwood Hill doing research on the collection of trees that are here. We've got the largest collection of Northern Hemisphere trees anywhere within New Zealand. And to have that collection of mature trees that a scientist such as Linda can work on, that can use as her base, is really a justification of the value of a, an arboretum such as this. Low maintenance, no problem. A lot of the trees that I, ornamental trees that I planted on our farm have come from seed that w was collected at Eastwood Hill. So I could come here, I could look at a mature tree and say, ha, ah, that is what I want in this situation. To be able to come and see mature trees gives you some idea of what they're going to do in 50 years time. Our family are planting on the family farm ornamental trees and little uh, waste areas of different types of trees. Now when they select the trees they're going to plant, they've got one more factor to consider, and that's the benefit to the bees. We've got beehives on the farm, and uh, we've never really considered planting for the bees, but now that's being factored into it. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.